And aloha. Welcome to the Travel Angel Radio Show. We've got a special theme for this hour of the Travel Angel Show. I'm in the studio, always nice to have back Kathy Takushi, who's just about recovered from her fabulous trip to Egypt, her five-star, six-star trip to Egypt with I bet you haven't organized your pictures yet, have you? I have not <laughs> no, done that's that. That's always the last no. thing to happen, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's I, like, oh, you gotta. I still have pictures on my phone from a trip I took to Tahiti last November, oh, which yeah. I haven't organized yet, so I understand I that. <laughs> It's what, hard. Do you, what do you mean by recovered? What happened? Well, <laughs> she was a, but the time zone was how long? It was, well, it's a 12-hour time difference. Okay. So, But, yeah, you know, it wasn't so bad. We kind of broke it up. But you still are off a little bit. For a, I was a I was more concerned you fell, got some bad water. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know. I, my stomach was good. There was a couple okay. people that had some stomach issues, but mine was fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, you travel a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we were we we're going to be talking about Japan, and, and you have mentioned in the past, Kathy, that you get more requests for people wanting to go to Japan. That's one of your number one requests and bookings mm-hmm. these days. Trip yeah. to Japan. Yeah, I think because, well, you know, there's a lot of Japanese, you know, ancestry from mm-hmm. in Hawaii. It's close. It's clean. It's safe. That's true. That's true. I think those are the top. And this week we were just talking about the fact the that Hawaiian good. Airlines <laughs> Hawaiian <laughs> Airlines offered a trip to Osaka, but it's for the summer for five hundred and seventy seven dollars. Yeah, now there. that's not including taxes, fees, etc. But I mean I was all excited about it and you said, Well, you know that summer and it's hot in the summer and I hadn't actually put that thought in my head and if you don't know that you might not know it. But but you know, the price is good. And uh, if you don't mind um, temperatures and stuff, you know, it might August be. August is a month where it is very. Mm-hmm. When you very say very hot. hot, is it like that humid? It's do you step outside muggy, and muggy you hot? Like you cut the air, take a step, cut the air again. Oh, it's like <laughs> that. Yeah, <laughs> kind of hot. It yeah. can it can be, uh, but it really much depends on where you are. If you're in the city, uh, it's going to be oppressive city hot. Uh, you can take a trip out to the mountains, and it's gorgeous. Just like oh. here, you don't like the weather you know drive uphill up country yeah 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 well that's an interesting thought you know because that's of course what you do if you live there you know Mm -hmm. you go outside and that might be why the prices probably is why the prices are cheaper just i should introduce you properly jason who's the co-host of the solar coaster show which just celebrated its first anniversary is here in the (laughs) studio and uh he was just in last week actually and i wasn't aware that he lived in in japan for 10 years and has a wife that that lives there in Osaka, and that there'd been this long distance Japanese kind of going Japan, Hawaii, all around the country yep. in this amazing uh, relationship that developed and blossomed, and kind of is lovely. We're going to talk about that a little more, but but you know, do you get requests, Kathy, at Captivating Journeys to to go in the summer? I mean, do people know when they called to, to book a trip to Japan that that, that might be a factor? Um, some of them know, some don't. I, I like last year. I had one, and they they knew, but that was the only time they could go. And uh-huh. when she came back, she said, "Yes, it was hot." Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and but, that's a factor, you know, mm-hmm. something to consider. I mean, yeah. I don't do well in 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 very very hot weather. I went to Hong Kong, Hong Kong years and years ago, and it was August. And I remember walking outside. I stayed at the lovely Peninsula Hotel. And I walked outside literally two blocks and had to go back and take a shower. It was that kind of humidity. Then I realized two days later they were boarding up all of the huge windows in the lobby at the peninsula. And all of a sudden I was getting these notices under the door that there was going to be, you know, a huge storm coming in and and literally buckets and buckets of rain. You know, um, I was the last kind of flight out of, of, of Hong Kong at time. I went, okay, this might not have been the best month to go to, mm-hmm. go to Hong Kong, you know. And you, you, you learn that way, which time is good time to go and which time is not good to go. But that's why you have a travel agent like Kathy Takushi, Captivity Journeys can kind of, kind of direct you in the right Help direction. Guide you. That's what mm-hmm. I was going to say. Is it. Ask yeah. your travel professional. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you two knew each other because you worked together the Maui ages Marathon. Ago. Yeah, I was the finish line coordinator and a couple other things helper. under Ruby. You, <laughs> I was the travel, doing travel. coordinator. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And I helped you in the finish line. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of people from Japan came in for the mm-hmm. Marathon. Yeah, a huge, huge contingent every year. We really appreciate them coming out year after year. Uh, of course, I've 
stopped doing that particular yeah. job, uh, so I'm not familiar with I'm it. I'm still but, doing but it. Are you still, <laughs> oh, are you still I, doing it? Do, I didn't do we still know see the same folks? Because it was so cool to see them all come back every, um, every single year. I didn't they go, loved it. They loved the whole Yeah, it's marathon. fun. I, I didn't go to the race last year, but I know mm-hmm. there's, they're still doing okay. that part. Nice. So what is the most requested airline um, that people have when they want to take a trip to Japan? I think Hawaiian, because they have a nonstop into uh, Narita, Haneda, and Osaka. Osaka. So, it, yeah, yeah, so if you fly, a lot of people, you know, they they want to do fly into one and out of the other, so then they would just take so the train open, between. Yeah. yeah, so that's pro- – and, and um, Hawaiian has been having pretty good flights yes. uh, and fares. And the seats are comfortable, and mm-hmm. they serve food. They do, which but, is nice. But the other airlines do on it because it's international. Oh, that's right, it's international. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely true. Yeah, um, and uh, but the other factor is that a lot of people here in Hawaii have Hawaiian miles. Hawaiian miles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you either go free or you can get an upgrade. I like I did. I got a pretty good fare and I upgraded. Did you get uh, to sleep? Yeah. The small flat, flat. Yeah. The yeah, flat they, yeah, they don't do first class anymore, but they're all business, business class. Yeah. But they're nice oh. and they're, they're nice. flat. I they're, took one on the way back. This yeah, it's just comfortable. Trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you had the uh, was it first class? No, it's business class. It's business class now. Mm-hmm. It wasn't flat bed though. It is. It is. Oh, it is. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. How nice that is! I, in fact, I think I still have some pictures. Of course, we can't show them on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how <laughs> much time difference between here and Japan? Um, it is. What is it? Minus. It's five five hours behind us, but tomorrow okay. because of the date is line. Is it like eight hours? It's five. I forget. It's only five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's not that bad. I can I can yeah. send my wife can a text we? message now, and she won't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> you would get good to know, out. right? Right, but it's it's actually nineteen hours ahead is the official diagnosis. So, right. so it's it's, it's yeah, more so it's than it's more it's than Europe. In the, it's eight twelve in the morning, right? So it's longer yeah. distance than Europe. Okay, mm-hmm. nineteen hours ahead. Wow. So, so yeah, eight twelve in the morning. In fact, my kids are probably in school by now. And do you keep currency handy in both? I imagine you have a little I've, one, I've, one I've, wallet I've of a, Japanese I've, I've currency. Got a list of, I've got a list of, of little <laughs> things to touch on as we sit here. Um, how long? How long do we have? I oh, remember. we have an hour. We have a yeah, full yeah, hour. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, currency exchange is actually one of the things I wanted to talk about. Yes. Uh, just because I've lived that for many, many years, uh-huh. and it has. I think the first time I went, it was. What did I say? I want to say like 135 per dollar. It was a long, long time ago in 1993. Um, and it was so that was really beneficial for people coming in from other places. Uh, certainly with the, with the U.S. dollar, um, it has been as low as seventy-one, which is quite literally half the value. Wow! Um, over the that's not recent. Over the past five years, it's been as high as as one twenty-five. Uh, today we're at one oh nine. To give you some perspective, a Big Mac is three hundred ninety yen, which is three dollars and fifty five cents so it's not too far off what you would expect to pay you can keep track of it and um i like just to give folks a base idea of what they're paying for things there uh just shift the decibel imagine all the prices are in pennies and because it's a little over that you're actually getting a bit of a discount but it's not but it's not too much Um, sales tax has gone up Ah. quite a bit recently in Japan. It used to be 5%, and now it's 8 um, So you want to be aware of that uh-huh. uh, as you go around purchasing things. However, um, with the uh, influx of Chinese uh, tourists, most of the shop, I mean, it's, it's absolutely huge. The Japan has really changed over the past, I want to say, five years or so. At least Osaka has, um, where there's an awful lot more of other tourists from other Asian destinations, not so ah. much from, I used to see a lot of Australians and Europeans and, and of course, Americans. Um, and I don't see those folks very much anymore, but there's a huge influx of Chinese especially. Uh, and most of the shops have started actually giving... Um, tax refunds right in the store so if you produce your passport show them that they will not charge you the sales tax that's nice to know that's a great that's a great really, really good great one. tip i like that tip. yeah, yeah. Make, make sure you take advantage of that because it can be a significant amount of money depending on what sure. you're doing um also for, just for currency exchange don't go to the bank and certainly don't use the booth at the airport yeah. <laughs> well there, you know what happens is people sometimes don't think 
and they need to get a cab or an Uber. What do you have Uber in, in Japan? Uber? I've never seen one. Oh, okay. um, we tend to use the, the regular taxis yeah. because there's just so many of them. But public transport is a thing in Japan. Like yes. you, you take the trains for literally everywhere. And you need uh, Japanese you currency. Do, you, do need, you do need currency. Mm-hmm. Um, so only change a small amount at yeah. the airport if you absolutely have to. Uh, that's the, the one at the airport is the absolute worst. Banks are a little <laughs> better, but they still charge you a couple of yen per dollar. So that what you do you change. do when you need to? There change. are lots of little booths, and you'll see them places because they have uh, generally they have tickets for things or gift certificates or that type type of stuff um, just out in little glass showcases. But they also do currency exchange, and this is where the Japanese people go when they're going to come to oh. come to Honolulu. Um, they will go there and they'll buy little packets of U.S. dollars, and inside the packet they have like little packets. Little packets. They make little packets, but how they get the U.S. dollars is they buy them from us. <laughs> so, so when we so when you go up to the shop, you can actually actually sell in your bills make sure you have the new style like the blue hundreds and the pink 20 trends or whatever they are they get the get the colored ones they much prefer flat nice crispy bills and i've actually had them turn <laughs> money away saying <laughs> i don't want i don't because it didn't look good and like i said they're going to resell these things <laughs> but they do give you by far the best exchange rate it's how do usually you know less when than, you see which, which stores have these little um packets. like i said from, from far away you'll see last cases and they have a lot of tickets and, and uh, gift certificates and things movie tickets etc in the glass case but if you look on top of the um the counter or in the side or maybe they have a little tv monitor that's updating the currency exchange rate you'll, uh-huh. see, you'll see that as well and they're literally everywhere i mean there's there's three of them within five minutes walking in, in at my house and probably more that i don't oh, even that's, know of. that's great or four no i'm sorry the new one just popped up there's uh-huh. like four within five minutes walking. and your house is in osaka, in osaka. Uh-huh. um i'm that house is in namba which is one of the two major shopping districts in Osaka. There's Umeda and Namba. Um, so those are the, the two major tourist uh, and shopping districts. Now, you know, it used to be everyone would come to America to do shopping, and and, and not always the best prices in Honolulu, but, but still we'd have, you know, I mean, really truckloads of, of visitors coming in and doing shopping, you, well, that, you that, that, that you is their, that yeah, that is, that is their vision of coming to Hawaii. Is the girls, <laughs> the girls want to go to the outlet store, and the guy wants to go check golfing? out the girls on the beach. Or, oh, I thought they wanted there. to go golfing. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a little old school. Oh, um, is it old honestly. school? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of that, when I was um, in Tokyo, we came across this um, local market. Mm-hmm in Shinjuku mm-hmm. and then I was walking around and I met this guy and he had all these things from like Kapalua Golf um, like t-shirts and hats <laughs> I guess really? he used to come to Maui a lot and he was selling them you know and he was mm-hmm. stopped doing that so he was selling them at the flea market <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> well but but there has been this complete revolution of culture um, of th- an explosion of Hawaiian dance the hula mm-hmm. halaos right and and it's really become a huge thing for the singers, the Hawaiian singers, to go in and sell out stadiums. I mean, and, and mm-hmm. the, this is all within the last 15 years to the yeah. point where now people like someone like Ulu Vegra and others have halals they've started. Um, and they visit regularly and they have um, a huge amount of people that have learned um, at, culturally. And some of them come back here mm-hmm. and they have them come visit here. Because they've heard so much um, about the dance and the, they practice diligently their hula and you know some of the course coming go to the Merry Monarch and mm-hmm. and it's a big deal so it's like this other whole realm of tourism that's developed between culturally Hawaii and almost like it's our um, cultural sister <laughs> country right in, in a way a little bit I mean even before we ever moved to Maui, I mean we've been coming to Maui since the early 80s but before we moved I moved the family here uh, my eldest was already in a uh, hello in in, o- in Osaka in, oh, and really? we went all, all over and we did tours even 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 being Osaka based there was a high demand for all the little kids to come up and dance and do events and things so it was it was it was a lot of fun and yeah they're very 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 hardcore <laughs> they are I mean they take it to a level well not that, that that here I mean it's a wonderful discipline for young people here and I have to give it to some of these people who I see you know just practicing and practicing and practicing and and the the 
Palau's are very disciplined here, but <laughs> some, yeah. of, some of them are just like, wow. When you take, you take J- Japanese discipline and yes. work ethic and you yes. apply that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty amazing, really. Yep. Um, so it, there is this, um, I mean, I think there's this, you see a what, lot of aloha exchange, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, that was the, the nicest thing for us uh, when, we, when we were there. Um, it's, it's difficult to as a foreigner living in Japan everybody treats you as a tourist no matter what I mean I've been living there for like I said 10 years and I would constantly see the same people and it's still really really difficult to actually make real friends and, and get a connection but those if you want to join a group like that it, it completely transforms their their image of you mm. and uh, yeah it was a whole lot easier <laughs> I was talking to Christine Wong who is a friend of ours and she was uh, working the Maui Matsuri festival and, and they were very grateful it didn't pour rain because they thought it might um, but they had the the, the the wonderful sailors from mm. the, the ship that came to reform on a Friday night and they were there watching the different activities of the cultural groups and I was saying to her I said well, they must have been impressed with our taiko drummers, you know, because we have a good taiko. She, they don't, they, she said they didn't really care about anything that was Japanese because they're Japanese, but what they really cared about was seeing our hula halaus and the hula dancing, and, mm-hmm. and that's what they really were really excited to be able to see and learn and, and be involved with the hula halau. She said some of those sailors had never been out of the country before, wow. had I never been the, out of Japan. I saw the ship in the harbor, and I saw some of them walking along the... I, yeah. We also saw them walking around. <laughs> yeah, they were cute. They were very cute. They yeah. really were. <laughs> very white outfits. Boy, mm-hmm. perfectly, perfectly kept. I, I need to take a little pause and, and give a little thought um, to what's been going on, of course, on the big island with the volcano. And what has really been um, quite a, an eye-opener to me is that um, tourism's been hit because of this. There's been, um, on the big island especially, um, many people who have had uh, hotels or bed and breakfasts or vacation rentals um, saying, well, we're going to cancel our trip, um, even if they're not close to the area that is dangerous. Um, and, you know, that's it's always so confusing. I, I've had many people actually say, are you okay? You know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Is that well, you yeah. too? I've, got, I've gotten like, those yeah. emails from friends in Japan. Yeah. They're, they're, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that their, like I said, their image of Hawaii is Oahu of Waikiki Beach specifically. Mm-hmm. And they really have no concept that there is more than one island. <laughs> well, I heard that a Fox News reported that it was Oahu on one of the oh, reports in the beginning. Yes, and, and that's when everything went like, oh, it's Oahu. And that was on, you know, national newscast. Right. Um, but, but, you know, whenever there's these things that happen, unfortunately, people don't realize that doesn't mean that, you know, the rest of the state's affected and it's a small area, not that we take away from what's going on it's awful you know but um it's also very bad for tourism and and people we we are dependent on um, tourism and so um when all this news is constantly out there to the rest of the world a lot of people think oh my gosh we can't go to hawaii now because they just hear hawaiian volcano Mm -hmm. um so it's really um we try to as much as we can through i guess social media and stuff do you have you have you got any calls from people who are planning to come or who are confused by this um we do a fair amount of inbound uh from for people from the mainland but no one's concerned you people know better yeah yeah that's good yeah because i mean i was hearing and reading um about i think it was a eight uh, percent drop in tourism mm. um that had happened and of course and it didn't help that of course the poor people in Kauai had the floods there I as know. well you know so people were still seeing all those images and so it's 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 interesting that when that happens i'm sure that some of that happened to japan after fukushima oh absolutely uh, and then they really did have some serious issues i mean they did they immediately shut down all the nuclear power plants uh, a lot of uh, hotels and stores and businesses were all shutting down escalators. They took out like half the fluorescent light. It was a serious issue because they really shut off a large portion of their power grid uh, in an immediate you know, knee-jerk reaction right after right after the event. Um, but of course, there was all sorts of other issues going along with that and radiation and things that people were seriously concerned about. I think that's less of a concern when you have volcanic activity, although 
you do see that as well. When, when now we're air, concerned air, about air, acid, airplanes. acid rain, uh, right? Right, right like, exactly. <laughs> acid rain. As, no, I mean, and again, that's not happened yet, but it's a concern. Sure. But when you see that, and I was looking and trying to keep up, as we all are in the news, and I see headlines and some of the, you know, national services, acid rain, you know, and then you're going, oh, no, that's, there's everyone going to think, and it's not even happened yet. It's a concern, you know, but unfortunately, the worst part of the story gets out there, and and then as people assume it's the reality. But but um, tourism is really an important part of all travel. You travel to Japan, travel here. I've heard stories that um, when things happened after 9-11, in fact, mm-hmm. that a lot of Japanese uh, tourists did not want to come because they thought it would be rude to come to a country that was going through sorrow or going through grieving and that they thought that kind of thing you don't do because it's not polite, which was kind of like, wow, I'd never thought of that you know it's like oh you don't i don't understand well, that there's, one. there's there's that aspect to it they there's i'm sure there's a dip uh every time we have a like a mass shooting or something that that shows up on the news um their their opinion is that the, the united states is actually quite dangerous oh is it really to. truly yeah, yeah there was <laughs> something Whoa. about that recently like australia or mm-hmm. somebody was banning their citizens were coming from the U.S. I had not heard dangerous. that. Wow. This was a while back. But. Well, you know, Peter Greenberg's been doing a couple of his shows recently from Mexico, and they, of course, say people aren't going there because we have travel bans saying it's dangerous to go to areas mm-hmm. in Mexico. And, and the secretary of the uh, tourism board was on Peter's show and said, well, it's dangerous to go to Chicago, too. It's dangerous to go to Las Vegas sometimes, but that doesn't mean that you can't go you know so well there are there are dangerous places everywhere america's is uh, just but the mainland is, is quite large <laughs> Did, but <laughs> there, people, there in, you, people you know in japan anywhere. actually think that coming to do they think coming to hawaii is dangerous um i don't think coming to hawaii is, is i mean it's, like i said it's almost considered a separate a separate, a separate thing. place yeah uh, but if you're thinking about going to new york then, then niagara falls is still a famous thing for them to do mm-hmm. um those types of, of course las vegas is one um new york is is one of those you know, in washington dc is one of those very highly attractive places but it's also considered a risk i you know it's funny because i hadn't really realized it our perception from the outside world was that way so so now that you are accepted more because you have a child that does i have who? i have Three children. Three children. Only, only the one when before we left um, was actually doing hula. And that opened up doors to it you. A, it absolutely did, and, and and just I mean my my magnetic personality over <laughs> over the years. Um, no, I was able to I was able to, to form a, a reasonable number of connections with folks there. Like I said, I get I get emails. Everybody's concerned with, <laughs> when there's something going on um, here, but uh, yeah, it's 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 like I said, it's it's very difficult to really get accepted more than just a tourist so if you have an invitation um from japanese to actually do it, first of all understand that an invitation doesn't necessarily mean that they really want you to come and visit their house <laughs> um it's it they're a very polite society um the offer will be made like please come over etc cetera, etc cetera. they don't actually mean it unless they really mean it and oh. you have to be able to figure out which it, which which it is is it this, this is just the polite offer or they really want to so is it their version of let's do lunch kind of okay yeah <laughs> okay. yeah sure <laughs> all right and, and it's and so it's when do you know it's beyond let's do lunch <laughs> uh, basically well, they're, they're gonna like take you by the hand and drag you home <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll it'll be repeated it would be it, embarrassing it would be, if you no. actually thought they yeah no, actually if, might get together if and you indeed. if you really did and then you show up it's a very very actually a bad thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um no it'll be it'll be repeated ad nauseum if they truly mean it uh-huh uh, but so that's that's something now your wife works for the airlines correct in united when did she yep. get start working for united uh, ninety-seven, I think. Oh, it's, well, it's she's been, almost been coming up on a, a year. Oh, actually, a year. She's over a year. Eleven years. 
Mm-hmm. So that really changed your your travel agenda. It it certainly helps me. It lets us go back and forth quite a bit. Um, she's never really been able to. I mean, United has a presence on Oahu, but it's one of those bases where you really can't transfer in. <laughs> uh-huh. So uh, so she continues to be based in Tokyo, in Narita, actually, ah. which is not in Tokyo. I think everybody needs to be aware of that. When you travel into Japan, there's a few major airports. Um, Tokyo International is one of them, but it's not actually Tokyo at all. It's like two hours outside the city. So be aware that there's a lot of travel time involved in flying into Narita. Um, but there is actually a little um, a city that's formed around that airport. They call it Narita Village, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And and uh, you take a train in typically if you're flying into Narita. If you fly into Narita, you would take a train or a bus. Um, either one. The airport you know, limo bus. The airport limo bus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, it, it's. You take did a that, couple Kathy, hours. when you were just mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's two hours about by bus. Mm, it was more, more about an hour and a half. The traffic was. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. Tra- it depends yeah. on traffic. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But that's the least. Ex- well, besides yeah. the train, the train's the least expensive. But the airport yeah. limo bus would be the next. Taxis but the, are really. Expensive. If you have luggage. It's kind of hard to maybe do. No, the buses have um, has has storage underneath. In general, I mean, unless you're traveling with a lot of stuff, uh-huh. uh, it's perfectly fine. I generally would recommend the bus over the train just for that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because getting yeah. on and off the trains with your luggage not only is it difficult, but it's also considered bad form to be taking up all, all, all the that, space all that up space with your on luggage. the train, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that's good to know, and that's something you plan. I'm sure you tell your people, Kathy, about that because that's something. You know, you're coming in, you're a little out of it, and sometimes the time it could be different hours, so mm-hmm. you have to make sure you're able to, to negotiate that. And you said, I think that the, the taking a cab would be rather yeah, expensive. Yeah, it's a few hundred dollars. Yeah, it's going to be a hundred dollars. Two to right. three hundred dollars. Oh, my gosh. I priced it out for clients. Yeah, it's expensive. No, it used to be that it was rather expensive for the hotels in Tokyo. Is it still very expensive for hotels in Tokyo, or has it come, the price come down? I've seen reasonable prices. Reasonable prices, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of competition right now wow. across Japan. Um, what I've noticed mostly, I mean, we still go back for summer break and, and winter holiday and everything. Basically, any break from school, we've been, <laughs> we've been <laughs> yeah. in Japan. Um, and so I've, I've watched things change over the past few years. And like I said, there's an awful lot of explosive amount of tourism uh, coming from other Asian destinations. Ah. And there's a couple things on the horizon now for Japan. Of course, the Olympics is the big one. Ah. In 2020, Tokyo will be hosting the Olympics. It's going to be so that's, that's where, a, where in outside, just outside? It's, it's Tokyo. It's called the Tokyo Olympics, but it is there. They've got venues all over the all over the place. Um, and then um, Osaka has a World Expo um, scheduled in 2025. And so in preparation for this, what you see are a lot of places that are reforming, revamping, rebuilding um, hotels and hostels. I see a tremendous number of hostels because it's more expect, just least less expensive and more accepted from like other Asian destinations that you really go into this this kind of shared room, or you travel as a family and you would buy out an entire room in the hostel. Oh, that is an but interesting very, very idea. I've, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> that hostels will do family rooms that you can rent out rooms well, if for you, the family if you, separate. Well, if you are traveling with 10 people and the room holds 10 people, then you take the room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of the... And Airbnb, the there Airbnb is... is, is gr- I've heard... Not, I've not booked it, but I have clients mm-hmm. or friends that have booked Airbnb in Japan. Yeah, Airbnb is... Um, originally, that was quite good. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get some great deals, and there were lovely places. Um, in recent year because of the explosion of Chinese tourism uh, it's kind of got a bad rap with the local populace um, Is it the same thing as here because it's taking up the real estate properties and that people don't like that? Is that why the bad yeah, rap? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not even that it's just that the, the buildings are not maintained they don't really oh. take care of things, they're literally there just to make a quick buck and uh, they're, they're not having a <laughs> they, there are a lot of things that you do in when you're truly in Japanese culture, like when we were going to um, resurface the um, waterproof the building that I own you go to your neighbors and you break a bag of rice and you apologize profusely for all the noise and everything else that you're going to be doing because I mean there's literally I want to say like four inches between my building and the building next to me wow. they're going to hear it yeah yeah <laughs> so you, you 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 but you just it's it's much more community 
oriented than, mm-hmm. than we may be used to. And, and certainly, I mean, we're, we're, we're far away from each other. You still mention it to your, your friends and neighbors that, hey, I'm going to be doing some construction, or if you have an HOA, you definitely have to go through process. But um, it's, it's just culturally accepted that you would go and, and apologize for the noise, the dust, whatever else you're going to be doing. Um, and none of these foreign owners of these new properties are doing any of that and so they've they're it's considered offensive they're not being polite right (laughs) they're not being good neighbors right which i think that could be something that we're seeing probably in a lot of places the fact that is probably building up uh, in in other cities as well yeah countries as well that eventually the people are going to say these people aren't around and they're not taking care of things and they don't know who's coming in or what's happening and you're and that can make enemies with neighbors pretty quickly as well if you have some loud and noisy people staying there or coming in later partying and stuff like that that can also be offensive yep which can, which can happen so that's what we're seeing a lot of in wow. japan so the Airbnb and you think the chinese is, influx more of chinese is, is actually kind of creating that need and demand because uh, I, that's what they're doing yeah i don't want to blame any particular group it's just that there's a, a massive influx of this this like i said other other asian destination tourism there's a lot of korean there's a lot of chinese there's a lot of um all the all the, they're just traveling a lot yeah which is. which is great yeah mm-hmm. and and i'm glad they're getting the exposure to other cultures i, mean, I think japan is a fantastic place to go i recommend it to everybody mm-hmm. no matter where you're from but the sheer volume of tourism is not something that osaka is generally uh ready for well there's about <laughs> three or four places that you know just like everyone wants to come here and they want to Go to Haleakala, or El, um, mm-hmm. and, and there's a you know you go to Lahaina, and and then you maybe go to the beach or some you know Mama's and you, Fish and House. You now need to make a reservation <laughs> for sunrise, right? <laughs> Did you see in the paper that tourism was down? Uh, to uh, yeah, to Haleakala uh, visitors were down. Oh, because uh, quite of the a large appointment percent. thing. I don't know if it's because of the appointment thing, but I think they also may have raised park prices as well. Entrance fees went might have gone up last year, but. But it's, it is something um, that we all kind of think and know of a few things. In Osaka, there's about three things that you go You go to the deer park, don't you? Well, it's Nara, right? So. In Nara. And the, isn't there a huge wooden temple that's very, very old, like a, a thousand there's, or two there's, thousand there's years a old? Cu- there's a couple of them you need to visit if you do these. If you do, um, what, I, what I always recommend to folks is, is use Osaka as your base. Yeah. Because you can reach um, Kyoto, Kobe, and Nara in as day trips Mm -hmm. and then you can still come back in the evening and spend some time in the city do a little nightlife in in osaka proper um all of them are lovely so you have um obviously want to do that not a thing um they it's not just that although the 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 bowing deer is a fantastic thing sit and just sit in the park grab a drink from the local convenience store lawson or a 7-eleven or something and watch the girls try desperately to feed the deer without touching them <laughs> <laughs> but they've trained these deer over the years they actually bow or they're supposed, they're supposed to bow um a lot of tourists don't know and they just kind of hand the thing hand, hand out <laughs> the little the little crackers that they sell um but if you hold it and wait the deer will bow and I then you can no give idea. them then you can give them the cracker <laughs> photo that's a good travel tip yeah that's that's a very absolutely good one lovely lovely photos if you can do it but uh-huh. watch, watching the high school girls who are all giggly trying to, to feed the deer without actually touching them is, uh-huh. is really really funny <laughs> uh-huh. and i hear osaka is a, a good place for food it's like a food capital or oh, a little bit people yeah. that know me and come over know that i make uh, okonomiyaki which is a um it's essentially a cabbage pancake <laughs> i have bit. never heard but of a cabbage uh, pancake you, you they need, don't serve it at ihop you now need to come over <laughs> uh, it's 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 a regional food from from kansai the kansai area um which which i absolutely adore and so i learned how to make it and, and i'll do those i'll do those home from time to time but there's a lot of stuff like that takoyaki is another one that's that's from from kansai osaka area um but food everywhere is just fantastic. I mean, you really can't go wrong. And yes, of course, there. Like I said, I started the show with, it, with telling you what the price of Big Mac is. Of course, there's McDonald's and Starbucks and a bunch of other stuff. Don't go that route. Yeah. Challenge yourself just a little bit because you will find some amazing food. Noodles, <laughs> noodles, yeah. noodles. Some noodles. Um, there's, there's one one that's my absolute favorite now. I, you have to walk a little bit through the seedy part of Osaka to get to it. Um, but it's it's um, it's ramen. But it's not. It's um, 
I want to say it's less soup and more sauce, <laughs> if mm. that makes any sense. Yeah. It's literally, um, it's uh, tonkotsu ramen. So it's, it's pork ramen, but it's the sauce has been sitting there for days, just simmering, simmering, Ooh. simmering down. Add a little garlic, and, and it turns into this sludge <laughs> wow. that, they, that you put on your noodles. Sounds like but Anthony is, Bourdain would is, love it. But it is so <laughs> good. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds great. Have you ever thought of doing tours? <laughs> you, you have all these Actually, I have uh, for a little for a while. I mean, I, I really thought that I just put up a website and offer a bunch of stuff. And well, to you know, have and someone who understands it and has lived there, it's, it sounds to, like to you speak Japanese as well. No, it's not like Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I, I mean, I can get by. Yeah. Uh, I never took a class. Um, I do speak uh, local. Kansai dialect, which is which is actually a problem because I don't know the proper, real <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> ah. for and and everything I ever learned was from me and my friends hanging out in the pub. So, uh, so what I, do you I call a pub in times. Japan? What's a pub? Is it same, same like what we think uh, snuck, English snuck, pub? Snack, um, snack, uh, oh. which is literally a place you would go to get a little something to eat and a drink. Um, beer, Japanese beer. Uh, it could be beer. Uh, my favorite go to these days is Chuhai. Which is um, everybody that's familiar with shochu or sho- soju, if you're uh, Korean. Um, the shochu is a barley based liquor. It's kind of the same process that they do for sake, but it's using the barley instead. And, and, and it can be quite good or quite um, almost tasteless. But the chuhai is actually made from the kind of tasteless variety. Uh, it's a very clean alcohol. Uh, again, anybody that's been over my house and drank a whole lot of this stuff um, knows that you, you can have a fair bit of it and still wake up clear-headed the next day, really? which is, I think is, is really, really unique, uh-huh. especially for me. Yeah. Um, I'm a couple, I have a stomach issue anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I can't, I can't do a lot of <clears throat> hard liquor. But, um, but the Chuhai is fantastic, and it comes, with, uh, it comes in a variety of crazy flavors, and you can find it in any Japanese convenience store. Really? Um, it's, it's spelled how? Um, C-H-U hyphen H-I is usually what is it, was on the can in, in English Interesting. letters. Interesting. Be interesting to try it out. You haven't tried it, have you? No. Oh, I'm gonna have yeah. to bring you some. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's that it sounds amazing. So okay, so you go to the deer park. You, you go where Grab else? Grab yourself would you a can of Chuhai. <laughs> and, and Kyoto. Where do you go in Kyoto? You, you the old town. Kyoto, it's beautiful. Kyoto, yeah, Kyoto. I would just walk the streets. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's a myriad temples and and little uh, shrines and things that you can just walk into. Some of them charge usually not more than like five dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can spend the day doing that. Um, that. That brings up another point, is that if you are traveling around and you're concerned about the language, um, don't be. Because, like I said, back in 90, 1993, I was the only guy, the only white guy there. But uh, somewhere, I want to say like 2003, 2004, Osaka made a bid for the 2008 Olympics. Mm-hmm. Didn't get it. But in that process... All of a sudden, subtitles appeared on everything. Wow, <laughs> amazing! So you can now get on the train, and the train have the stations already have um, everything in English. They're now numbered. That's so amazing because the they all, didn't have that you can, before. You know, yeah, you know exactly which station you're going to. They're numbered, so you know if you're going the right way or not. Very and good. Um, the announcements overhead are in Japanese, English, Chinese, Korean. Wow. Uh, some, some maybe both like both dialects Chinese major um, difference but major unbelievable difference. unbelievable difference and so you know you can get around street signs most of the places have English menus even if they do, the staff doesn't speak you can literally point at the big pictures on the on the uh-huh. thing that's another thing all, all Japanese restaurants as you're walking by it's it's general generally accepted that they're going to have a glass display case and inside is the plastic food that everybody hears about but it is so well done that it literally looks exactly like what you're going to be served so if you want that just point at that <laughs> and, oh. you, and you will get exactly that so if, so what else would we but, do down from Osaka what would the other be um to? so you have um what is it the Kinkakuji, Ginkakuji, which are the, the gold and silver um, temples. I think that's one of the ones you were talking about. Um, the gold leaf temple, um, Kinkakuji, was done, was finished. And unfortunately, they ran out of money before they were able to 
do Ginkakuji. So Ginkakuji is still just wood. But both of them have fantastic grounds and are just lovely to walk. And mm. so if you're, if you're really looking for that kind of cultural experience, um, I would strongly recommend those. Uh, there is one of the largest Buddha in the world. Um, I think that's actually Nara. Nara. That is Nara. Um, you is can, it Nara you or I thought it was Kamakura? It's the outdoor oh, one. Yukura has a. Yeah. I don't know outdoor. if it's the largest one, one but it's large. big. Yeah, one of the one of the yeah. one of the largest. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if it's the largest one either. Well, there's a difference because um, the one in Kamakura is outdoors because the building temple grounds caught fire a thousand oh. years ago or something, mm-hmm. so it's outdoor. So they, they, I think that's one of the largest outdoor. I'm not sure if yours might be the largest indoor. Or I think that's the in, yeah, it's yeah. the indoor one. Mm-hmm. Um, in Osaka proper, of course, you would want to go to um, Osaka Jokoin, which is Osaka Castle Park, which of oh. course has Osaka Castle now. Osaka Castle also has burned down a number of times, mm. um, and it is museum inside. So it's been oh. rebuilt, and it's a modern museum inside with a lot of Japanese history, um, Osaka history specifically, so Kansai area. Uh, but the, the castle grounds are fantastic. If you are there, especially during cherry blossom season, which of mm. course we are just which is just over. Um, it's it's a lovely, lovely park. I when we were there, I would go for hanami, which is just literally uh, watching flowers, um, to sit in the park and barbecue and drink and have a good time <laughs> every year. Where would you recommend staying, and how much would it cost when you go to Osaka? Uh, realistically, I mean, like I said, it depends on what you're willing to accept. If you are you have no problem with the hostel experience, I've seen prices under. Um, $25 a night, which is which is crazy. Um, realistically, it's going to be a little more, uh, maybe $100, $120. For a hotel? Uh, for, for a nice hotel. Uh, is that uh, all? That's it. Like a three-star type? Yeah. I, I've seen wow. like 150 mm-hmm. for I, like a three-star. That are I'm, pretty decent. I'm amazed. I thought it would yeah. be much more than that. I yeah. think they charge more for folks coming uh, f- calls f- calls from overseas as opposed to what, mm-hmm. <laughs> what I see advertised. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe. And then... But, Two hundred ish for maybe that, that's two a really, to three really, hundred really nice for hotel. four or five star. Yeah. So yeah. it and and eating out isn't bad. Eating, eating out is never bad. You're going to pay more if you start to drink, of course. If mm-hmm. if you you like to drink and you want to sample the too high or anything else out there, um, you, it, this tends to be more expensive. Lunch is the best deal. Actually, breakfast is the best deal going because you can get a, a morning set um, when you wake up in the morning and it's early. Uh, head outside, you'll see little coffee shops. Try to patronize the little mom and pop shops because these places are fantastic. You'll go in there, um, you order a cup of coffee, and as a service with that, it, they will give you toast or an egg or half a banana what? or whatever else. It's it, the, the, the food is free. You buy a cup of coffee for, really? 300, for 300, 350 yen. I've never yen. heard so, of that. So, I mean, so you can get a breakfast for $4. Correct. Yep. Amazing. And then, and then so just order the coffee just, and then... Yeah, order the coffee. It's it's generally as assumed that you're there for everything, but wow. uh, but you will order a cup of coffee, either hot or iced coffee. That's going to be what the, what they want to know. The only question is hot or ice. Uh-huh. Um, if you want to act really cool, you can say reiko, which is actually chilled, like refrigerated coffee. <laughs> but oh, cool. I, I I don't even hear anybody of my generation using that word anymore. That's that's very old Japanese. Ah. <laughs> wow! Um, so you can do a trip like this. I mean, if you were going on Hawaiian Airlines at 577, mm-hmm. 577 but that's going to be warm. Um, but it's throughout the summer, so maybe you avoid the August time. Try to avoid August if you, unless to, you're a glutton for punishment. Maybe late June. <laughs> I don't know if they'll start in late June. Mm-hmm. But, I think but it was, um, I was just reading the email. I think it was good through the end of May um, was the, the stipulations. Book by May 19th for travel from May 4th through May 31st. Oh, well, that's not bad because I need to go in May. Even, yeah, that's Round still, trip that's starting at 577. That's and it's, pretty and darn good. And the weather good. right now is fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's a little warm in the sun yeah. in, in the city, but if you're walking the park or whatever else, you're going to be, it's just perfect. So you can do a nice trip for about seven or eight days for mm-hmm. pretty reasonable. Yeah. About seventeen, yep. eighteen hundred dollars 1800 So lunch, lunch, you want to look around. Um, they still have something called the one coin lunch. Now the, the Japanese currency <laughs> is a little different where they actually have a large 500 yen coin. That's like $5. Oh. So it's a $5 coin. But because of that, they have the one coin lunch 
special. Well, that's a great deal. Five dollars for lunch. You, you can't get you lunch use, for five dollars here unless well, you are you going get, to you, McDonald's. No, you can't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. Minute so you, stop. You can. Yeah. There you <laughs> well, that's there you go. true. Yeah. That's. I won't say anything. <laughs> okay. Well, the one coin lunch in Japan is usually pretty good. It's actually meant for for like business people and stuff mm-hmm. picking up. But um, but you and you can look around for bento as How well. How do you know it's one coin lunch? Does it say? Oh, they, they it's usually they have big. It's going to be a big sign. It says coin? five zero zero, and usually the coin the zeros are the coin. Oh, okay. So you'll see that, and it's <laughs> okay. it's pretty obvious. They they try to make it very very obvious because they're trying to attract that that lunch business. Uh, extremely competitive. Dinner is where you're going to get caught. So yeah. watch uh, where you where you go and watch the menu prices. Actually, that's another thing. If you don't see prices on a menu, yeah, stay away. If yeah. it's if if if, it, if you have to ask, it's too expensive. Oh really? <laughs> okay, that's yeah. good to know. That's that's a that's a biggie. Uh, so make sure your menus have prices on them before you sit down. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm I'm vegetarian. Is it hard? I don't eat fish. Uh, difficult like you don't eat fish and you're yeah sure that's i mean it's 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 well known um i'll be eating but a lot folks, of rice but the folks that are rice gluten, yeah gluten <laughs> the gluten-free folks or the the, the vegetarian folks are going to have a little harder time mm-hmm. uh, there are some places uh, again you're actually going to see that in english on the windows for the places that are really really trying hard um if they say it's vegetarian i wouldn't i mean if you have a serious allergy mm-hmm. i would still Try to steer clear of folks unless it's unless it's well documented that it's that it's not because they don't they yeah. don't bother um, like washing the, the knives they'll use the same knife for everything so if you have an allergy that's a problem uh, but if I don't it's if it's, if it's a lifestyle yeah. choice then yeah. maybe you're, you get you're, by you get a get a bite of it so when you people go to Osaka do you, I think a lot of people still take the the bullet train and go into Tokyo true mm-hmm. as well. And Tokyo is a lot more expensive, right? You were just in Tokyo. Did you find it expensive? I didn't. We we the hotels arranged like I said anywhere when we went, but it was winter, so they were lower mm-hmm. price. I anywhere from you know 150 on up. Mm-hmm. So it it just depends. But the food, we found little hole in the wall ramen shops. I, we never spent. We were only there three days, but we never spent more than twenty dollars. We don't drink. That's amazing. There you go. Total for two for dinner. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Amazing, so, and I mean, yeah, we were. Now you don't rent cars. No one no. rents cars. You don't drive. You, no, I yeah. mean you, you you can if you really really want to. You go crazy because um, isn't it on the other side of the street? Yes. Yeah, that's which, that's a, a double. I mean, plus which, traffic which, which is never, insane, the, right? Driving driving on the other side of the street never really bothered me. The issue is that the traffic is very difficult to navigate. Um, you will be dealing with a lot of other like like pedestrians and bicycles that you see. Um, that that are sim. I mean, I see guys no handed on the bike, typing on his cell phone, nah. darting in and out of traffic. Oh no! <laughs> it's Saw that a lot in Egypt. It's pretty. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty. Mopeds. It's pretty scary. Yeah. It's pretty scary. <laughs> um, but the roads are very very narrow. I mean, it's mm. just not where you're used to. And I, I I go to Japan and I stay there for a little while and then I come back and I, ca- I park at Costco. Those spots are gigantic. <laughs> I always thought they were I could, small I here. Car- I could put two cars in. I'm there. shocked. <laughs> I really am. I always thought so, the spots were small here. Yeah. No. The roads. The roads are very, very narrow, and you see a lot of, I mean, um, one ways that are not actually one way. Like it, you literally have to wait for somebody else to come before you can go the other oh way, my. the other way down the road. Yeah. So, so it's well, buses take you to places like Kamakura, it's, it's like right? Around. You do, you do basically. You, you, you pick can those do up bus from, trips. There's yeah. a lot of, you know, at your hotel, the concierge can do bus trips. Mm-hmm. We just took the train. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, the, yeah, yeah, the trains, the, train, are the, the trains, trains are the best deal the best going. Way, yeah. Absolutely, best deal going. Uh, they do have passes, so if you are going to be using the train a lot, uh, think about getting one of the the, the, JR the rail, rail pass, pass uh, before things. you leave. Did right, you do that? Did you get the rail there. pass? No, we no, were only doing three days. Yeah. But if I was doing longer, yeah, I would have. There's well, no well. metro, is there? It's just the train, all train. There's well, no like it's like a metro, yeah, lo- no, there's, like there's, inside there's, the city. Okay, there, there's there's the subway, or the Osaka actual subway, and Tokyo subway. Tokyo subway is a little bit difficult to navigate just oh. because there are so many of them. Uh, there's a lot of different lines, so you want to be clear. But again, they've they've all got subtitles and the announcements are in English, so it's not nearly as difficult as it used to be. No. Uh, Osaka subway is like just simplistic, <laughs> super yeah. easy, uh, but it's not JR, so you have to go and get JR a separate, meaning separate Japan. Uh, Japan Railway. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Rail service. That's the actual company. Mm-hmm. So if you get a Japan Railway pass, that's not valid on the subway. Uh-huh. So do that. Like I said, if you're going to be doing um, the day trips in and out, uh, you know you're going to be bopping around places. Um, specify that date first. Again, try check with your travel professional um, to get the pass on the day you expect to be 
driving or traveling around and then um, pay the subway as you go. Well, it's, we have about five minutes, and I want to cover the top things to do in Tokyo because still a lot of people still go to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the combined, when you sell packages, you sell Tokyo most, and there's some Tokyo Osaka, or what do you? It's mo- mainly a combination, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 there's that beautiful, beautiful, um, I know, remember the grounds of the, the king's. The palace. The palace. The emperor. emperor. The emperor's yeah. palace. Mm-hmm. Was, I remember that. That was very interesting. It's essentially the, like the equivalent, like I said, going to Osaka Jo in Osaka. You want to go to the emperor's palace in Tokyo. Uh, there's a huge park around it with the moat um, and everything, and the, the park just extends up beyond that. You can literally walk it all day long and never see the same place twice. It wow. is It is very, very large. And then um, you want to go to some of the old temples. There's some lovely old temples right in the middle of town, right? The, yeah, the, these are these are places that have been historic, uh, uh, what do they call them, sites, uh, international historic sites. Uh, for world heritage. World heritage, that's the word, <laughs> thank you, uh, for, for long before the city had really grown up around them. Um, but they're, they're, they've been there for thousands of years. A lot Japan of incense. Has a history. A lot of incense. Uh, for sure. Um, <laughs> do, when, when you walk up to these temples, it's expected that you um, wash your hands and your mouth. Um, watch the people ahead of you. Do what they do. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. Easy, I didn't know that. Water. I don't drink the water. Don't don't drink the water. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. There's that. <laughs> How do you what? You wash your mouth and spit it out? Correct. No, you or you pretend you're drinking the water. You, you well, yeah, you're, not, yeah. you're not you're not actually supposed to drink it at all. Yeah, you're supposed, you just, to, you're supposed yeah. to yeah, you're supposed to spit it out. But do watch watch the people ahead of you. Um, you'll you'll get a general pattern. I was And then aware when that. you're when you're done, the last thing you need to do take another scoop of water and make sure you wash the handle before you put it back. So. <laughs> I have a video I of that. that. I think do I posted you? on Facebook from our guide that showed how to do how that. To, how to do it yeah. properly. I wasn't aware of that. That's yeah. good. That's an, very good to awful, know. Awful, awful now, lot of I, that. I highly recommend Kamakur. That's mm-hmm. a beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful, and you said that wasn't hard to get to by, no, by train. No, it was like one, uh, one, maybe an hour out of Tokyo, mm-hmm. and then to Kamakura, and then where, where to go to the, the big Buddha, you go to Hase, which is a small little train just to maybe two stops after that so yeah. how how do you do shopping can you just walk and find the shopping it's 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 a fast city it's big fast and mm-hmm. it can be confusing to someone who doesn't kind of know their way around walking can it uh, absolutely like i said the signage has gotten much better um generally speaking the shopping areas are all kind of connected and um conglomerate in one place, right? Oh. Um, so you're going to be, like I said, Osaka basically has two large shopping districts. It's Namba and Umeda. Um, Tokyo, I mean, where would you, where would you point? Um, if Tokyo, Tokyo is know, such a large, sprawling yeah, thing. It's hard to I tell. Mean, there was Shibuya is obviously one yeah. place you want to go. Uh, stand in front of that famous um, five-way Scam- The Tokyo Scramble. Yeah. yeah. That. In Hachi, <laughs> the Hachi statue. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that type of stuff, um, but and, and just pretty much anywhere you're, you're not you're not banned from anywhere by being a foreigner. <laughs> in they, fact, in fact, knowing knowing stores. knowing a co- knowing one or two words um, goes a long way. The best words, with folks. To, best words. We only have like a arigato. <laughs> arigato, is, arigato is the one that everybody That's the only knows. One I know. <laughs> no, the one that I want to teach everybody for this for this episode. Open your ears right now, okay? Sumimasen. Sumi masan, like sumi, sumi, sumi. 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 Don't please, but sumi, <laughs> sumi masan, ma, like your mother, ma, sen, sumi masan, sumi masan. It means thank you, and excuse me in every way you can think of to use excuse me in English. Oh. You bump into somebody, sumi masan. You want to get somebody's attention in the restaurant, sumi masan. It's always, always sumi masan. You put an accent on sen, sumi masan, sumi masan, sumi masan. It's it's um, just very 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 useful. Okay, <laughs> so everybody. Su- sumi masen. Yep, sumi masen. Okay, well that's something I'm I'm really glad you taught me an important word. That's that's probably the most useful one. Um, arigato obviously is one. Um, domo, you hear domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Um, <laughs> domo is is uh, you can say it just by itself, domo, but it's domo a little, means thank you. Domo, can, it's like thanks. Thanks. Okay. It's it's a little casual, and I wouldn't uh, unless you know someone. Know someone, or you're you're. It's a very clear um, disparity in in class status. Ah. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily use it. Okay. Um, but but it's 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 easier to say domo. 
Have you become more polite? Oh, we only have 20 seconds for the answer. <laughs> have I become more have polite? More no. polite having gone to, to, well, it sounds like you've become very polite. Learning how to be polite in, in Japan is very important. That's, that's an absolute necessity if you're going to live there and have friends. I mean, you don't want to offend people. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, you've done an amazing job, Jason. Jason with Solar Coaster, it's on Fridays here. You can hear it. I always learn something very interesting. Solar and you Coaster, do a, 105. It's, it's at 1 o'clock, it's 105. It's a renewable yeah. energy theme talk show that we have. Yeah. And and I really enjoy it. And thank you, Kathy Takushi, 244-1414. Captivating Journeys. Aloha. With your